okay so you can see the slide can you see it yes sir yes, sir okay okay so today we'll discuss about a very important genetic disease as all of you may have uh, heard about this disease rabies right someone is waiting i think to join So this disease, rabies, there are some synonyms like hydrophobia, lesia, rays, or mad dog. Okay, the synonyms are also important so far your examination is concerned sometimes in the fill in the blanks or like matching and all, right? Hydrophobia means uh, you have fear of water means you will be afraid or having afraid or mean the fear of water okay then lisa so far the virus which is causing this disease is also known as lisa virus okay of the family rhabdoviridae so it has been given the name lisa grace this is due to the i mean this violent uh, temperament i mean this of the animal okay i mean in hindi you might have heard about gusha right then mad dog means they used to show madness syndrome okay means we used to say pagal kuta right i mean this madness used to be there by the i mean this uh, shown by the affected animal okay particularly in case of dog it is very common right so this this is rabies as you might have heard many a times i mean uh, some time to time i mean this in uh, the many these parts of the country in this india or other parts of the world also means it used to happen the outbreak of this disease okay and uh, it is highly fatal it is one kind of very acute viral encephalitis means it used to cause affection the affection of the brain the central nervous system particularly the brain and uh, it affects the main and other warm-blooded animals means all kind of warm-blooded animals including human and the disease is characterized by means when we are talking about the characteristic features of this disease so there will be signs of abnormal behavior nervous disturbances there may be impairment of consciousness ascending paralysis and finally death and so far the case fatality is concerned among the infectious diseases okay so it is showing the highest case fatality so far the infectious diseases are concerned means once i mean uh, this uh, infected i mean by this virus lisa virus and if you have not taken any vaccine post by vaccine and all these things then means you are sure to die because of this infection okay this virus infection rabies then it is one of the ancient diseases most ancient diseases described i mean this is very old since long i mean this uh, time immemorial so disease has been occurring and it is prevalent and it has been considered as the model genosis whatever we used to talk about the genosis okay genetic diseases so this is the one of the most important as term as model genotic disease okay and the name this disease rabies so it has been derived from the latin word rabier that means to raise that is one kind of i mean this very violent anger the state of violent anger very much i mean this anger mood i mean the violent okay so from that it has been derived that is a latin word known as rabier okay and so far the etiology is concerned is i have already mentioned you that it is caused by a virus known as lisa virus it is an uh, it is a rna virus of the family rhabdoviridae and having four official serotypes so far the serotypes are concerned maybe i mean this rabies virus is levels i mean this bad virus is mokola virus is this duven hawk virus is obodium virus is kotonkan virus is so these are the six official serotypes of this laser virus and it is 
having very prone and affinity to affect the nervous system. That means a neurotrophic virus disease. And having a very typical morphological structure, what we call bullet shaped in structure. Okay, if you see the structure here, see, it is looking like a bullet and this bullet shape, right? So this is very typical. So for this, I mean, this Lisa virus is concerned. And the virus used to be grouped into two types. One is street virus. Those viruses, Lisa viruses, occurring in the nature, naturally occurring cases. Okay. Then fixed virus means those Lisa virus, I mean, uh, which has been, I mean, this uh, fixed in the laboratory. I mean, this uh, these are the laboratory stem using for the preparation of I mean, this vaccine and all these things, right? Those are known as fixed virus, which has been fixed in the laboratory animals. Okay. And the naturally occurring cases, those viruses are known as street virus. Okay. And uh, the differences between this street virus and the fixed virus is another important. So far, your examination is concerned, means you may come across this type of question means write the differences between street virus and fixed virus. So I'm just giving the differences. So this street virus exists in the naturally occurring cases. I mean, in those infections, particularly in dogs and other warm blooded animals. Whereas in case of this fixed virus, it is the passage form. I mean, it's fixed by serial intracranial route in case of uh, I mean, this experimental animal like this rabbit. Okay, then the incubation period so far the street virus is concerned, it is highly variable. Okay, maybe 14, uh, this 11 to 47 days, whereas in case of this fixed virus, it may be shorter, maybe six to seven days. And when we are talking about the microscopic feature, microscopic changes of the affected brain, okay, of animal as well as human, one uh, inclusion body, known as negri bodies used to be present in the cytoplasm of the affected neurons. So the presence of this neuro on um, this uh, negri bodies, these intracytoplasmic acetophilic inclusion bodies, it is found in the brain of all infected animals, I mean, including human. But in case of these fixed viruses, these negri bodies, I mean, this kind of this intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies, will not be observed. There will not be any negative bodies. Okay. And the street virus are having very much affinity for the salivary glands from where the virus used to come down along with the, I mean, this, uh, they used to affect the salivary glands and they used to come along with the saliva of those affected animals. That means, I don't know, means you might have heart or not. I mean, this dog bite, I mean, this uh, bitten by the mad dog, like, I mean, this is a rabbit dog, we used to say, which has been infected by this virus. That is known as rabbit dog. Okay. And the dog which has been infected this virus. And whenever they used to bite. So while and they are biting, they used to cause some injury. Okay. Myocytes, the muscle. Then from there, along with the saliva from those animals, when the virus is coming out that, I mean, uh, this uh, with that saliva, and that they used to get entry to those injured part of the myocyte muscle. From there, through the nerve endings, they used to gain entry. Okay, and they used to go to the brain. From there, they would be and this spreading out, transmitted towards the salivary gland. Then along with the saliva, again, it will come out. That is a cycle, right? And this kind of this affinity to affect the salivary glands and the presence of the virus in the saliva is not happen happening in case of fixed virus and when we are talking about this street virus it doesn't have any self limitation that means it can affect it is pathogenic to all the warm blooded animals it can affect any of these warm blooded animals so far the fixed virus is concerned it is self limited that means it is not virulent for human and mostly it can be utilized for the product preparation of this I mean, revis vaccine. Okay, so these differences are, I mean, this is very, very much important so far it is concerned, right? Then now coming to the susceptible host, I mean, those species of the animals, including human, of course, 
I mean, what kind of these animals are affected and susceptible to this infection? So all the warm-blooded animals, means there is no any difference in susceptibility with relation to age of the animal and the variation may be there in different species, but there is no any, I mean, this, uh, what to say, age factor. Okay, someone is waiting, let me see, just a minute. And people are coming late, it really disrupts. So the animals like dog, fox, wolf, jackal, shrunk, mongoose, cat, rat, squirrel, vampire bat, they are most extremely susceptible in the tropical areas of the world, while cattle, goat, sheep are moderately susceptible and the cattle used to remain as dead and horse. That means, particularly means transmission of this virus from the affected cattle doesn't happen. I mean, no more transmission, no more spread of this disease. And the animal, the I mean, I'm talking about the cattle, once they are affected, they will die. I mean, if not, this vaccinated, post by vaccine is not given. And the no spreading, no transmission, further transmission of this disease will not occur. Okay, I mean, that is what we call dead and horse. And so far, the equine families are concerned equity. They may also be considered as dead and horse for this virus. Means the equines, they are also considered as dead and horse. Why the reptiles and the birds don't get this rabies? This is very important point. I mean, sometimes you may be asking, and um, you may be asked, to give the justification why the reptiles and the birds don't get rabies. Okay, and they are not mammals, number one point. Okay, they used to lay eggs. Okay, those animals laying eggs, they are not considered as mammals. Okay, mammals means they used to give birth a young, I mean, this baby is okay, means no leg laying, I mean, it is not there. So they are not mammals. And this virus is having strong affinity, I mean, for the warm-blooded animal only, specifically for the warm-blooded animal, not for the non-mammals. Okay, that's why they are not affected. Then the rabies in case of these animals may exist in two forms of epidemiological types, known as R1 type and sylvetic type. And R1 type is those cases, those type of this rabies, where the transmission takes place through the bite of the stray dogs. Okay, through, I mean, these dogs. That is known as R1 type. And those rabies cases, I mean, known as sylvetic type, where the involvement of the wildlife, I mean, through the bite or scratch by the wildlife population, and I mean, these animals like fox, jackal, wolf, shrunk, mongoose, bumper bat, hyena, and etc. I mean, so these are the wild animals when the involvement is mainly, I mean, the I mean transmission of the disease or spreading of the disease is through this wildlife population. So that kind of this rabbit cases, rabbit rabies are known as sylvetic type. And R1 type means involvement of the stray dogs. I mean, the, the transmission or spreading of the disease through the bite or scratch by the dogs. Okay. And in South and Central America, um, this, uh, uh, this America, uh, you might have heard about the vampire bats. So these vampire bats used to remain in the, I mean, these caves, you know, I mean. So when people getting into the, um, this cave, or I mean, this, uh, sometimes, I mean, uh, people going for, I'm um, just hiking and all these things. So they used to get into the, I mean, this uh, uh, caves, you know. So there used to be many vampire bats and all. And these vampire bats used to preserve this virus, rabies virus, Lisa virus. Okay, and through their um, this saliva or the, through the bite of this vampire bat and all, they may also transmit this disease to the human and as well as these animals. Okay, and so far, I mean, that's why they are known as the maintenance host in those, I mean, these parts of the country like South and the Central America. Whereas in Europe and the North America, fox used to be the maintenance host. Whereas in Africa and Asia, jackal, and in Middle East and Eastern Europe, the wolves are the men and this maintenance horse. Whereas, I mean, in North America recently,
But it has been shown that raccoons are also uh, maintaining the I mean, this virus. Whereas in India and South Africa, mongoose are the main maintenance host of this virus, lizard virus, and uh, they used to preserve this virus in their body. And when I mean they are coming out, I mean uh, they used to and they suppress or bite and all them the animal population. I mean this maybe maybe wild animal and the dog also. I mean this can be infected then. Of course, those infected animals may be wild or maybe I'm this state dog or I'm this normal domestic dog and all. Then it may, I mean, again, I mean, this may be infected and they may transmit the disease to, I mean, through bite or spread, right? So these are some of the photographs showing different animal reservoirs maintaining host of um, this virus, these are virus. Okay, so these are the photographs of different those animals I have mentioned. Then these are some more I'm just photographs. Okay, so please go through it. Then I will just skip this reservoir species of territorial award we have already discussed. And coming to the history, also I will just skip it. Okay, this is, I mean, you have to buy her and you have to go through it. I mean, all this Davis, I mean, the, the starting and the, I mean, this in from the ancient this days or years, I mean, when the, I mean, these people having all the animals, so far animals also concerned, they're having this problem of this I mean, the rabies and all these things, right? Someone is again waiting. So please go through this I and mean, this history and this are collection of I mean this many I and mean, this history from different sources. Okay, please go through it. Now coming to transmission, we need to know I mean how the disease is transmitted. Somewhat I mean this in brief I have already mentioned through the bite mainly, then through scratch. Okay, I mean or through handling the affected animals also. While I mean this you are handling the animal, the saliva and all this thing it is coming into contact through your, I'm this, uh, uh, you know, I mean, some, you have some scratch and all these things, through that means it may get in. Okay, so usually, means the virus used to be transmitted through the saliva when an infected animal bites another animal. And that means the virus used to remain in the saliva two days before the onset of the clinical signs. That means when the affected animal starts showing signal, this, the signs and symptoms of, I mean, this, uh, uh, normal behavior, okay, madness or violent anger and anything. I'm this clinical signs and symptom. Before starting showing the signs and symptom, from two days before starting this showing uh, this clinical signs and symptoms, the virus used to go. I mean, along with the saliva means they used to start excreting along with the saliva of that affected animal, and less oftenly it can be spreaded by any contact between the infectious saliva or neurological tissues or even mucous membrane as well as the bracts in the skin. Intake, true intake skin normally it doesn't uh, get transmitted or it cannot get entry into the body. You should have some scratch through that injure and this part of the body skin and all. Then only otherwise true intake skin that cannot get entry. And this rabies virus is not transmitted through the intake skin as I have already mentioned and uh, some rare reports of transmission are also there through the other routes like a few cases have been already reported after cor this cornell transplant and this transplantation that means when you are transplanting this cornea through that using that I and mean, this cornea and this tissue there of course normally what happened is the knob tissue used to be there along with that means it may be along one they come along and then aerosol transmission that is also have been reported and documented in the laboratories, particularly when you are handling the samples, okay, collected samples from different I mean, these animals for, I mean, this laboratory purposes, isolation, identification, and all these things. True, true aerosol transmission may be possible from those infected tissue, I mean, these uh, materials, or as I have already mentioned, so far the vampire bat, bats are concerned inside the caves. So there used to be, Presence of high in high density of aerosolized virus particles in that cap. So when you get in in those caps or animal also get in in the cap inside the cap and all these things. So chances of getting, I mean this uh, inhaling these aerosolized virus particles 
which are remaining uh, present are in the, they are inside the cave okay so through aerosol transmission it is also possible it has been documented then rabies virus have also been shown to be transmitted by ingestion as in case of this laboratory animals okay of course it is very rare through ingestion but it has been shown that when this infected tissue has been fed to i mean this laboratory animal okay through ingestion the so laboratory animals have shown to have and this shown the signs and symptoms of this disease rabies okay so i'm just showing some uh, with i mean this ischemic dry uh, this diagram for the transmission so almost all the transmission so for animal as well as human is also concerned it is through bites okay like this as i am showing the picture through bites so if the i mean uh, what to say i mean this bite or this crease when we are comparing so 50 times greater risk is there than a crease i mean this biting by an rabbit animal means we are talking about dog or maybe in under this one this wildlife or this animals also like so through bites it is having more i mean this 50 times greater risk than as uh, stress okay and uh, uh human one human case may have been acquired in laboratory i mean it has been shown i mean as i have already just mentioned you that aerosol transmission is also possible okay and how happened i mean the one and this the spreading after transmission how they used to go to the i mean this uh what is the brain and all like through the side of the bites okay so this is the side of the bite through this injury myosite and all so virus used to gain entry through the and this myosite then into the nerve endings and the virus is started replicating and this multiplication and through centrifugal force they will go towards the center and central nervous system that means through spinal cord then to the brain after reaching to the brain it used to be transmitted spreaded towards the salivary gland and from this salivary gland infected one they will be i mean this coming out along with the saliva infected saliva okay so this way the infected animal what we call rabbit animal or rabbit dog so they will transmit this and they will start i mean this spreading or transmitting or oh, sorry i'm this presence of this virus in their saliva just before two days of showing clinical signs and symptoms but the incubation period as i have already mentioned you that 11 to 47 days okay so it is highly variable one thing i would like to say is that we cannot say even this 47 days and all sometimes even it has been recorded that more than 15 years even 20 years have been reported that the incubation period that means after the biting or stress mostly bite through and this bite of a rabbit dog i mean uh this girl was not having and um, this or showing any symptom even up to 20 years after 20 years she started showing the signs and symptom and the one thing about this disease is that once the animal or the human which means all it by a rabbit animal or rabbit dog and not been given any false bite vaccine and after many years even as i have mentioned 18 to 20 years also it has been reported so they start showing the clinical signs and symptoms he or she or the animal is sure to die within 10 days it is quite sure okay that is known as this is rabies 10 days okay means starting day of showing clinical signs and symptoms from that day just go on counting days so if the case if the human or i mean the person or the animal is not given any post bite vaccine okay then it is sure to die within these 10 days that is your question 10 person i mean this okay that's why it is much better i mean without i mean having any this any risks better to go for post bite vaccine you have already taken the pre white vaccine well and good if not i mean you should go for post bite vaccine okay there are so many these vaccines i mean you can go for i mean this uh, vaccination even after bite okay i mean there used to be some procedure i mean this i'll tell you later 
Okay, so this is I'm just showing the photograph of and this vampire bats. Okay, now we do pathogenesis, the development and process of this disease pathogenesis. So as I have already mentioned you that two bites most commonly, the virus gain entry into the I mean this uh, side of the I mean this bite. So virus deposited in the back of the wound. I mean there should be some wound through intact skin it cannot get in right so in the that wound the virus used to be deposed and this deposited and by this infective saliva okay i mean when you are the animal is i'm biting and i'm this uh, animal another animal or a human for example so through bites i mean some injury will be there right and the Things. Sometimes the saliva in a mouth, in a mouth, right? So through that saliva, if it is an in this infected one, just before showing the clinical signs, into virus will be right. This laser virus, so it will get. I mean, this uh, transmitted through that depth of the wound and uh, deposited there. And from there, there will be starting local replication and this local multiplication of the virus in the epithelial cells as well as the myocyte of that site. Okay, and after several days or months, the virus drained into the peripheral nerves and then transported to the nervous system by retrograde flow in zones after entering a zone through motor and plates. From the motor and nerves or and plates, they went through the central nervous system. And after dissemination, spreading out and dissemination within the central nervous system where the clinical signs may develop is neurons are affected and from this start i mean they may show the i mean this behavioral changes and also when the system neurons have been already and this affected the virus used to be distributed to highly innervated tissues via peripheral nerves okay means it may distribute some other nerves and through the this peripheral nerves and, and the virus may be found in the nervous tissues, all the nervous tissues in the body. Okay, the salivary glands, the saliva, as well as the central, I mean, uh, this uh, cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, and some virus have also been detected in other tissues and organs. Of course, it is rare means mostly in the nervous tissues, any kind of nervous tissues or the gland, the saliva, as well as the spinal, uh, spinal fluid. These are the main tissues or I mean, the samples which used to contain the virus. But it has been shown that some other tissues or organs also have been shown the presence of I mean, this virus, but rarely. And induced by this virus in the nerve tissue when they are present this nerve tissues and all like and this peripherally even the central nervous system and all so they used to cause highly irritated I and mean, this irritation there so because of that there's a different I and mean, this typical form what we call furious form they used to very much furious very much anger mood and they mess and the destruction of the neurons when i mean uh, the virus started destructing the neurons and all these things so that only means they will show the signs of paralysis, maybe paralytic and this form, or this is known as paralytic or dumb form. Okay. And this is particularly of course the last stage. Okay. And after that, and this eventually and the animal used to die after this phase. Then there is some, I mean, this uh, important point to note down that the ability of this laser virus how they can reach the central nervous system depending upon various factors. That means the virulency of the strain of the virus, then the quantity or the concentration of the infectious virus in the saliva, how much, how many and this concentration, how much and this quantity of the virus used to be present in the saliva. Then the susceptibility of the species, then anatomical distance between the bite and the central nervous system. One thing here I like to say is that when we are talking about the uh, bite side, I mean the side where the animal has bitten, okay. If it is nearer to the brain or central nervous system, 
okay and uh, the ability of the virus to i mean uh, to the um, this brain used to be very quick and uh, more severe i mean this sign that this inquisition period also used to be and this actually and this uh, quick or shorter and when it is further from the central nervous system as well as uh, or from the brain then it will take time and it will be some milder it will take time to reach the brain of course if it is very far then the last point is the severity of the bite it's how much severe that means the degree of the wound wound injury caused by the bite so according to the injury and degree of injury the wound severely affected or i'm this by that bite so depending all these factors so the ability of the virus to reach the central nervous system depend or varies right then this is another schematic diagram for transmission and spreading of the virus as we have already discussed and another schematic diagram how they used to go through i mean this bite and then going into the central nervous system going into the, and this reaching to the central nervous system brain again coming back through and this by affecting the and this salivary gland and then and this uh, going out along with the saliva and all these things right and this is another and this extremity diagram okay i mean uh, the dog may be and just bitten by some wild populated and the animal like and this mongoose raccoon and this any other of this wild under by bat also like then once the dog domestic dog i'm talking about uh, and this uh, uh, this uh, arab and this urban okay i mean when the domestic as well as the stray dogs are concerned the rabbit dog okay involvement and transmission of virus i mean uh, and the true bite to the human as well as other animals right okay then coming to clinical signs so so far the human this is concern is we have and um, this i have little bit this already mentioned you that uh, the incubation period means used to be highly variable means 20 in some cases or this less cases maybe three months or one person case over one year but i have already mentioned you that means some reports there where the incubation period this has been shown to have more than 19 years almost 20 years 19 years six months okay reported in the year 1966 okay, by instructor so i'm this so that is the report that means that shows that the incubation period is highly variable we cannot expect even so that's why i mean this we cannot this take any risks that people used to say that after bitten by a dog just see whether you are showing the signs and symptoms of madness or either uh, any i mean this behavioral changes and not if not then there's no need to go for vaccination people used to say like but that is not fair and that is not good not advisable because of this incubation period you know i mean this even after 20 years i mean this people will start to in sign symptom and die right so this way it is highly variable so we should not take any risks we should go for post bite vaccine right and uh, the incubation period is shorter in case of bite as i have already mentioned closer to the brain okay if it is very close the bite side is then incubation period will be shorter if it is very much in this uh, far from the i mean you know i mean this brain that means at the lower extremities of your feet for example then it is very far then it may take time and uh, it will uh, this give um, this very long this incubation period as far later it is so it is highly variable and in case of different animals also dog sheep pigs incubation period as i have noted down so many i'm this incubation so just not one thing is that it is highly variable even in animals okay some of this average i have given here but means it is variable and it is highly i mean it is variable right and in case of dogs two forms of the disease so far the this clinical forms are concerned signs are concerned so those are number one furious form or known as madness syndrome where the violent mild this uh, uh, abnormal behavior violent anger mood and all these things will be there then the last phase i mean where the animal will remain dumb okay and uh, 
immediately the rise from that, I mean, this the animal will die. Okay, that is known as dumb or paralytic form. And the first sign one can notice in any of the I mean, these cases of this, uh, you know, I'm mean, this rabies, maybe in human or I'm mean, this uh, animals, is change in normal behavior. Means the animal or the person who has been bitten by a rabbit dog and infected. If infected, sometimes every bite doesn't cause rabies because virus may not be there in the I'm mean, this infected. I'm the, sorry, I'm in the saliva. All the time it is not present. Okay. Or the quantity also may be like sometimes, maybe. But we should not go for taking any I'm this risks. Okay. Who knows? I mean, if it is present or not, we'll be I'm this able to say that. So that's why. But I, I like to say is that every bite doesn't cause rabies. It may not be present. The virus may not be present in the saliva in that very particular moment, moment when the animal bites the person. Okay. And may not be um, this, uh, uh, during, maybe during the incubation, not just before you are showing the clinical signs and all. Then virus will not come down to the saliva, right? So that's why every bite doesn't cause rabies. That also it is there. And that's why people used to say, I don't know if you might have heard or not. When someone is bitten by a and this suspected and this rabbit dog or another and this animal like that to catch the animal and keep the animal under observation for 10 days. That is what I have already mentioned, the course of this disease rabies. That means the animal, once it starts showing the signs and symptoms, it will die within 10 days. So if it is a rabbit dog, if you want to confirm, for example, if it is possible, if you get the dog then kept under observation, under confinement, of course, then try to see whether the animal starts showing the signs of madness, behavioral changes, or those signs and symptoms are just come to, I mean, this show those, I mean, this, okay. And if shows those signs and symptoms, that means you can almost say, suspect that, oh, it is a rabbit dog. If it doesn't show within that 10 days, then you may think that it may be during this incubation period or it may not be, a, I mean, this rabbit dog. But we should not take any risks. That's why better to go for vaccination. That is now this different thing. Okay, but the animal means used to show the signs and symptoms once and they start showing signs and symptoms, then it is sure to die within 10 days, maybe human or animal, right? If not vaccinated. Sign is I have already mentioned change in normal behavior. Then the animal start, I mean, this stopping and they, they will stop drinking as well as eating. And the death is virtually, virtually certain within 10 days after the onset of the clinical signs, as I have already this explain the course of this disease rabies 10 days okay once they start showing signs and symptoms it is sure to die within 10 days then now coming to the clinical signs so far the dogs are concerned the furious form known as mad dog syndrome the animal will be very much irrational viciously aggressive very much anger mood okay violent anger biting slashing at any this moving object or in animate objects means anything passing by or just going in front of and this thing so they will try to bite or they will to suss and know that there something and this or uh, what to say uh, is there in, in front of it and then they will try to bite and uh, then and they will show i mean this uh by this barking also and violent anger and all these things okay and they will be furious champing of jaws with excessive for me salivation champing you know and the lower and upper jaw, they will just go on jump, jumping of the jaws, okay. And with that, there will be production of very, this excessive foamy salivation and they will hang down from the mouth, okay. And it will progress towards muscular incoordination, then they will start seizure followed by paralysis. Now then it will go to the next phase or form that is dumb or paralytic form when the animal becomes unconscious and his peculiar staring expression. They will look at, they will just stare at you or any inanimate object and all this, right? They will just go on and just keeping staring at you like, and they will, I mean, this totally this unconscious. Then 
paralysis will start from the throat and the muscles of mastication with profuse salivation as well as inability to swallow it. dropping of jaw is also common and the paralysis progresses rapidly to all other parts of the body followed by comatose and that right so these are the two clinical forms so far the and uh, these dogs are concerned so these are some of the pictures showing this you know this excessive salivation here dumb and paralytic form going to the corner okay very much weak paralytic post you see stiffness like there's very much anger i mean this uh then barking then uh, this biting and all the, in this face very furious form right then these are some more i'm just uh, pictures showing furious form dumb and paralytic form like this then so far the cattle is concerned the clinical signs in case of this cattle so affected cattle maybe through bite of or disgrace by the rabbit dog or other animal right means these are of course cattle are known as uh, dead and horse means from this no more further this is spreading of this disease and all okay saliva and all the meat will not spread i mean that means so anorexia sudden fall of milk the kill will be there and they will show trembling and twitching of the ears paralytic condition of the muscles of deglutition with excessive salivation and grinding of teeth this one is very typical grinding of teeth okay then they will just tend to slower and have difficulty in drinking water that is mainly due to the i mean this paralysis of the glute muscle of the gluteus and throat muscles okay means it is paralyzed that's why you know i'm this uh, animal Men, as well as in human also will find very much difficult to drink particularly in human of course they will be um, just showing fairness of the water because means they may feel thirsty and if you are offering water also if they try to uh, just drink it so they will feel very much pain spasmic and just pain in their throat muscles and they cannot take it so that's why they will feel fairness so fairness against water so that what we call hydrophobia that is particularly occurs in human okay uh, then the animal i mean this cattle often they used to show the signs of simulating shock it means it seems that they are having some shocking there in the esophagus okay like that because of paralytic condition of the muscle of the gluteus okay then very characteristically one typical sign so far the cattle is concerned that is known as bellowing means one type of crying with deep loud sound okay and very cry and this what to say i mean uh typical sound i'm very sorry i mean this uh, uh, some i mean this uh, videos clips and all this thing also sometime i mean uh, some day not today of course i cannot link up now i mean so that typical sound used to be produced when they are having i mean this paralytic condition of the vocal cord and then that very typical deep sound producing i mean this produced by the affected cattle that is known as bellowing so that's why grinding it and bellowing so far it is the very clinical sign and symptom of it cattle i mean the affected cat rabies i mean this uh, rabies affected cattle okay and the damage is actual excitement which can be noted both in this male and female and in the field cases so this very and this bellowing and excessive salivation as well as the grind of it, they are the most common is to noted okay and the animal will be very much i mean this unmanageable because of changes and all this <coughs> the animal cannot be managed properly and <coughs> and the clinical signs and symptoms in other animals in case of horse and donkeys incubation period may be at this six weeks and up prodromal signs may include behavior behavior rubbing or biting at the side of the wounds 
and uh, rabid horses frequently develop furious, extremely dangerous to be managed. And uh, they may become restless, excitable, showing signs of colic pain and sexual excitability. And they may attack by biting and kicking humans as well as inanimate objects. Okay. And uh, after five to eight days of the paralysis will start to set in. And uh, then the horses will fall repeatedly and finally they will remain on this down until they become comatose and dead. Okay. And uh, of the horses then they have paralytic form, of course. I mean mostly I'm the furious form. When this they show the paralytic form, they may show the head pressing, pressing of their heads against the objects because of the that is actually what happened is that the brain damage or the nervous tissue this damage and all these things and irritation and all these things right so they may feel that something is uh, inside it going uh, irritation in the brain or the tissue center nervous system particularly in the brain and all so they may feel that by pressing their head to any solid object they may feel relief they may relieve it so that's why they will just press their head against these solid objects and ultimately they will enter a rapid, this rapidly progressive terminal paralysis then comatose and then and coming to the clinical science so far the humans are concerned the prodromal and this phase usually you associated with mean the men and the acute form you can say i mean the when the most common form I mean, of this human this rabies and all these things it may be associated with non specific, specific clinical signs of fever, headache, malaise, sore throat, anorexia, and nausea, vomiting tendency, some illness, ill health condition, right? All these things, right? Then some patients may experience a meso pain or itching at the side of the bite, and that may lead to frenzied. I mean, because of this itching sensation, very much itching, pruritic condition. Okay. So they may go for and this scratching going on, this with a madness type, frenzied. I mean, this without having much sense. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about unconsciousness. Means you will be crazy to go for scratching at the side of the bite. Okay. That much, I mean, this itching sensation used to be there. And the patients, the rabbit, and um, this, uh, in fact, the rabbit infected humans. They may next enter into agitated where the patients are highly excitable, rest about and undergo convulsive suggestions randomly or following stimulation. The affected humans, they will be very much excited and they will be running for convulsive fever. I mean, this they may run here and there. Okay. And they are also not meant to control them properly. After that, they will undergo, they will be seized muscle. I mean, that is actually due to paralysis to set in in all and all these things, right? That type, then I mean, this may have a little bit convulsive seizure with contraction and general. And this type of this seizure. Maybe this randomly means you may just find this, but sometimes when you still, I mean, by some normal issues, you may have shown just kind of this kind of seizure also. And the people or the persons may become unable to swallow with copious saliva, and they may manifest hydrophobia. That I was talking about. They will feel fear to see water. When you offer a cup of water also, and it, and it will feel the person or the human, I mean, the affected person, maybe he or she, I mean, this may feel very much thirsty. But if you offer a cup of glass, I mean, uh, the uh, glass of water, then they will try to, I'm just drinking. Whenever they try to drink, then they will feel very much painful, spasming, painful of the trap. Okay, due to the paralytic condition of the muscles of the gluteus and all this. So they will feel very much fear to see even the water. That is what we call hydrophobia. Okay, then they will show disorientation, hallucination, confusion, stupor, and comatose, and finally that. Right. So this death may supervene abruptly after one or ten days or 
paralysis may set in gradually and pass on into the final common phase. That means, I mean, once they started showing clinical signs and symptoms in humans also, we didn't turn that this dentist normally means people used to die. Uh, I mean, in the final stage of comatose and then after paralysis, right? Then these are some of the pictures showing, I mean, this, say, I mean, this uh, videography will be more better and this, this is still uh, this photograph. So I am mean, unconsciousness type, I'm this anger, this nest type and all these things. I mean, yes, uh, it is more or less same, of course. And then hydrophobia, where if you offer water then automatically they will feel very much fear water. They will not accept to take the water even. I mean, Okay, and these are some continuation, I mean, from different sources about the, I mean, okay, this clinical science in humans as I, we have already discussed. Okay, then lesions, coming to the, I mean, this pathological lesions. So for the gross lesions are concerned, there won't be any characteristic gross lesion. Okay, maybe some, you know, I mean, this congestion of the brain and all this, but that's not any specific that, it is due to uh, this disease rabies. Okay, so there is no any specific gross lesion. So microscopic lesions are very much important. And uh, mostly the changes, microscopic changes used to be much confined or limited to the central nervous system. Those changes, process of the neurons with specific cytoplasmic inclusion, what we call navy bodies. And sometimes, so, Diffuse encephalitis with perivascular cuffing. Perivascular cuffing, last time also I have mentioned that uh, I mean, uh, particularly in the brain, I mean, particular this brain tissue, central nervous tissue. Okay, there, if you see any section of basal, I will show the picture. I mean, this slide, of course, before that, I'm just explaining it. So, when you see the uh, cross section of the vessels, just around the outside, I mean, I'm talking outside the vessel, just around the vessel, there will be aggregation, just simply presence of mononuclear lymphocytic cells. So that condition is known as perivascular cuffing. Peri means around, vascular means vessels. Cuffing means aggregation of some mononuclear cells, mainly this lymphocyte. So this brain tissue, when they are showing diffuse encephalitis, means very severe on this inflammation. So they may show such kind of this, that is perivascular cuffing. And uh, this other lesions also may be found in the brain stem, in the hippocampus, as well as gazerian ganglia, ganglia. Okay, and there may be collection of lymphocytic cells with proliferating glial cells forming and nodular like this structure, this aggregation of um, the lymphocytes along with the glial cells. So that aggregation this may uh, be found in, in a, this some parts of the um, this brain. So this may give some nodular type of this lesion. Those are known as Weber's nodules or Weber's nodules. Okay. And the most specific and most characteristic or you can say pattern also, I mean, that is of the presence of these intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies known as negri bodies. So that may be found in the hippocampus in dogs and humans. Then Parkinson's cells of the cerebellum, so far the cattle is concerned. Okay, that is very much important. Means where you will find this kind of these negri bodies in the brain. So particularly in dog as well as human, so it will be observed, it can be detected from the hippocampus. Whereas in case of this cattle, from the Parkinson's cells of the cerebellum. Okay, so this particular, these photographs, they are the, I mean, this, uh, uh, this allergy in Negri, actually, this photograph. Okay, who discovered this very particular, I mean, this inclusion bodies. Okay, so, what we call, I mean, this Negri body, it has been given after his name. That's Negri. Okay. Then, so these are the photographs. Okay. Perivascular cuffing, just around the vessel. This is a cross section of the vessel. So, outside the vessel, so aggregation of mononuclear cells. Then, 
aggregation of lymphocytic cells with glial cells forming just just like a nodular like structure of okay, aggregation so that what we call babs nodules then nagribotis so this is a, a section of a neuron particular neuron so inside the cytoplasm okay acidophilic i'm this inclusion inter cytoplasmic inclusion body used to be there so that what we call nagribotis like this here also see the neurons okay like this so these are important I mean, this is a brand i mean this showing i mean this uh action um, but i mean a little bit congestion and all these things may be but there's a specific cross lesion uh, microscopic lesion of this very particular negative bodies and sometimes of course this very body and that these babs nodules are also important but that is not so particularly this very vascular coughing is not specific or only because in many other this uh, this is where a brain is affected so they may show perivascular coffee it is not specific only for rabies but negative bodies are specifically for this disease rabies right then finally coming to diagnosis so clinical diagnosis based on the history of bite then the clinical signs and symptoms and lesions you can clinically show the uh, and the susceptibility or possibility of this disease rabies but you have to go for laboratory diagnosis for confirmation okay so it may be by immunofluorescence of acetone fixed brain tissue or spinal cord impression smears by this technique and this mainly i mean uh, one uh, standing technique known as heller's stain for demonstration of the specific stain it is actually for demonstration of the negative bodies okay so by this stain I mean, you can detect or you can stain this very particular negative bodies and the brain tissue. Okay, so this is very important. Cellular stain is a specific stain or special stain for negative bodies. And a simple ELISA test can also be conducted if fluorescent microscopy is not available or a sensitive evidence biotin peroxidase method can also be recent and it has also been developed for formalin fixed histologic sections means those formally fixed tissues okay to show on the presence of to detect the presence of this negative bodies and all then on it means you have to go for isolation of the virus and identification by even molecular techniques and all then some mouse inoculation test also can be done means by inoculating the infected and this brain material nervous tissue okay and uh, this and they may show within the some they will show the signs and symptoms of this clinicals and this signs and symptoms of this rabies of this and this there are some signs that everybody in neuro this cytoplasm by using this and this direct this fluorescent antiquated biotin this technique and this uh, evident biotin complex and all these things right and these are uh, i mean some more and this continuation to about the confirmation and diagnosis of this so actually this anti-mortem diagnosis for this rabies may include the detection of the antigens and the nucleic acids and the serological uh, by serological techniques and RT-PCR or immunofluorescence may detect the viral nucleic acid of this lizard virus or some of the entity in the saliva or a skin biopsy is taken out from the nap of the neck or in the skin. The virus occurs actually in the cutaneous nerves as the base of the hair follicles normally. The rabies virus is sometimes found in the corner impression or the eye was fit. So that's why if you conduct RT-PCR, so to detect this nucleic acid, uh, sorry, I mean this, uh, from this uh, corneal impression of the eye was fit also can be done. And uh, particularly in such cases, if you are using cornea and the infected one for transplantation and all. So through transplantation, it can also transmit, of course, with that we have already talked and this uh, corneal transplantation. Okay. And, uh, the detection of this uh, virus, the nucleic acid of the virus, Lisa virus, can also be done by the technique just are shared from the fluid also. And the, the virus isolation, of course, it is very much helpful in either anti-mortem as well as post-mortem diagnosis. And the virus can be 
sometimes can be isolated from the saliva, conjunctival secretions or tears, corneal impressions, skin biopsies. Okay, and less often occurs from the cerebrospinal fluid in living patients and sometimes from the brain tissue when you conduct a post-mortem examination, normally means you have to collect a brain tissue. Okay, from there, the hippocampus so far, the, this uh, canines and the animal humans are concerned, then the, I'm this cerebellum uh, so far in case of I'm this cattle, popularities are concerned. Okay, then so far I'm this mouse, this inoculation test and all this, in case, so that we have all the demands. So this animal inoculation test, uh, particularly it used to be done into the I'm this winling, I'm this mice, okay, and uh, they may show the clinical signs and symptoms after injecting such kind of, I mean, this uh, infected nervous tissues and all, right? So these are some continuations similar means uh, from different sources. So that's all for this disease, Revis, okay, and uh, this is very much important so far your examination is also concerned. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you.